In this video, we're going to go over some of the details when you have a camera that is live linked. Here we have a camera that is linked inside of iClone. You can see that Unreal reacts. Now I'm going to go to the render section and one of the first things you need to know about is that the output size actually affects the Unreal camera. If I change to different resolutions, you'll see it update in Unreal. So I'm going to use iPad Portrait just because it makes it easier to see in both applications. So if you look at the top of the screen, you'll notice that it says preview up in the upper right here on iClone. And it's previewing the editor active camera. But if I create a second camera, all of a sudden it switches to camera in the upper right. And as we move around, you'll notice that Unreal updates. So in actuality, Unreal is always showing you whatever the active camera is in iClone. I can switch over to the preview camera and zoom out and you'll see the camera we made. But notice that Unreal is only using the active camera. Let's go back to our original camera that we created. You can see that it updated in Unreal yet again. If I go to the Scene tab, you'll see that the camera we made is what's selected. If I go over to the Modify tab and click on the different fields of view, you'll notice that it does update in Unreal. Now these also match typical lens sizes. Here I'm moving the focal length. And once again, it also updates in Unreal. Now if I go to Film Back Data, of course, it's going to change it over in Unreal as well. So obviously there is a good connection between the cameras. Now let me set this to full frame and let's look at another feature. I'm going to scroll down and go to Depth of Field and click on it to open up the options. And I'll activate it. You'll see everything is blurry in both screens, but let's go hit the pick target button and click on the night. And now our night is the focal point. If I go to the monster and pick a target, he's the focal point. Now let's get a little help. We're going to turn on view depth of field regions. And you're going to see that the red area is the area that's in perfect focus. Now, of course, the blue and the green are the transition from out of focus to in focus. Now I've been playing with the focus distance and the perfect focus range. And this allows you to selectively adjust this so you can get the look that you want. Now, one of the options that I have checked is the lock near and far effect. And what that's doing is that's making sure that when we make these adjustments, it adjusts it to both the near and the far range. So adjusting the transition region allows you to either have a sharp effect or a subtle effect, depending on how you have it set. Now, the same applies for the blur strength as well. And since we have them locked to both near and far, whenever you adjust the near blur strength, it's going to adjust the blur strength on both the near and the far. Let's find a depth of field setting that we like, and then we're going to look at it as we play the sequence. All right, this might work. We'll hit play. You'll notice the night stays in focus all the way till the end of the sequence. Now that's a pretty good shot, but I think we could do better. So I'm going to go back to the first frame, change the camera angle slightly, play through here. Now that we're at the end of the sequence, let's open up the timeline. Go to where we know we're going to end the sequence and add a camera move. So once you have the camera placed for the end of the sequence, we can go back into the scene tab and I'll select the camera. And now you can see the two keyframes for the sequence. So let's start the focus on the first frame with the monster and then in the focus with the knight. So on the last frame here, I'm going to pick the target and select the knight. Now he's what's being focused on. Now I'll go back to the first frame. Go back to pick target and pick the monster. 
So now it's going to transition in the focus from the monster to the knight. And you can see the transition as I drag through the timeline. Now let's animate the camera for the rest of the sequence. We know that our focus is on the knight. Let's turn off the view depth of field regions and go through the sequence and make some camera adjustments. All right, right about here, we'll make a key, double clicking on the timeline. Let me go a few frames and then scoot back and actually rotate the camera to a better view. Go farther through the sequence, zoom in, rotate. So each time we do this, we're adding a key which is gonna move the camera through the sequence. At this point, you should have a much better understanding of how cameras work between iClone and Unreal using LiveLink. Using iClone for your camera work can make your job a lot easier and a lot more fun.